Hi there, in this video I'll be sharing some of my thoughts and observations from trying out the example project of Epic's recently announced MetaHumans. Like many, I've seen the videos from Epic and were blown away by how incredible the quality was. So I grabbed the example project, played around a little, rendered a couple of videos myself, and now I'm going to show you that project and how I went about doing those videos. This isn't an in-depth tutorial of this feature because the full version hasn't been released yet. Instead, I'll just be exploring the sample project, talking about what I've found and how it might work, and hopefully providing you with some pointers if you're looking to play around with it yourself. So I hope this is useful. OK, let's get started. To access the project um, via the launcher, go to the Learn panel uh, to begin with, uh, because that's where most of the engine, if not all the engine feature samples that Epic provide are listed, and then you can choose the uh, the particular project and it will take you to a marketplace again and you don't download it via the basket you just click this button here create project choose the location you want and it will download it and, and install it in terms of space that you're going to need um, to be more to to be exact the size on disk for me was 4.67 gigabytes so that's how much you'll need and you will need um Unreal Engine 4.26. There, you, it's no point trying to run this on anything else uh, older than that. Um, the other question that is being asked as well is: that Do you need a really high spec system and an RTX card to run this project? Well, no, you don't. And to give you uh, an example of that, the system I'm running right now um, is not not the 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 best system in the world it's it, it's okay um but i don't have access to an rtx system at this moment in time but i'm on a laptop so i'm on a, an hp zbook 15 inch g3 laptop um so it's not the latest version but it's still okay um i've got 32 gigs of ram you know a fair size hard drive and my video card is a quadro m2000m which is Probably better like a mid-range video card with four gigabytes of memory. Uh, so I'm not using an RTX system. And uh, Epic do say in the documentation that yes, you should ideally use um, a high-end system because they're going to want to have this feature shown off in the best possible light. And I totally get that, but not everybody um, has has that uh, feature right now. But so you can access this and you can use it if you don't have a high-end system. Okay, now that we have the project loaded up, we can take a bit of time to just really explore what's going on here. I want to do that first before I move on to uh, explaining what I did in the videos that I managed to render. And I really just played around with the fit, with the lighting. I didn't really do anything um, really deep. It was just really me experimenting with the actual scene and just seeing how it actually works. The, the structure of the content browser is, is really simply laid out. Um, everything's very easy to find uh, and in the respective directories. If you're looking to have a look at the sample humans themselves, then the best directory to look at is this sample meta humans. Uh, there's four directories in here. There's one for each of the actual characters. Um, and these contain the everything required for that particular character the other directories uh, there's a common here that contains elements that are used by uh, both characters and then there's a sample directory which has got a mixture of both um, which seems to be mainly clothing here and then there's a turntable directory with some sequences in and we'll come to those um, in just a moment then there's um, a sequencer directory with uh, the MetaHuman sample sequence, and this is the main sequence of the video that was released online with both characters talking and the uh, control rig. Uh, and then there's some static messages at the bottom here. Um, this Z new, just ignore that. That's me. That's something I created when I was started to mess around with this project. If we look at the outliner, there's not much in the scene itself. If we go around and uh, just move around, the scene is very small. There's not an elaborate landscape. There's a plane here, which is just a single plane with a texture on it, uh, which is easily located in these directories under materials. That's just to provide a background for the character. And the rest of it is all the lights and, and the cameras. There's also um, a lighting rig here with all the relevant lights in it 
uh, a player star and then two post process volumes uh, interestingly they do the same thing um, but i think one is aimed at doing the more um, cinematic output rather than just the simple rendering and that's all there is there's not really much to it the what I did find is I think the in terms of the humans themselves, this blueprint is the single thing that you actually need. So that's what you need to do to import it into another level. Um, everything's contained inside this blueprint and you can actually open this up and have a look at it. Not going to go into this as well, but you've got the um, AR kit set up. Uh, you've got also a breakdown of the uh, what is contained in the character and also the LODs as well. There's quite a few LODs to this particular character set. But this is all explained in the documentation here. It's worth looking at this as well. There's some really good information here about what's contained in these folders um, if you wanted to uh, use the asset on... Uh, different platforms there's a lot of detail about the LOD sync and also how many LODs there are and there's loads um, and also how to retarget the uh, how, to re how to retarget animations onto these metahumans I had a quick play with this myself it's actually quite easy there is another page to this here which goes into a little bit more uh, in depth the skeletons are very similar uh, to the U the, um, so the skeleton in the metahuman is very similar to the one that the UE4 mannequin uses, but it's a little bit more expanded in, in MetaHuman for obvious reasons, but mainly due to the facial animation. And this guide is really well laid out and you can use the basic retargeting process in the usual way. There's the correct number of core joints in each skeleton for this to work. And there's also poses as well to make sure that you've got the right uh, A pose for the respective skeleton. So that's all there and we can play that um, another time. What I, uh, but, but anyway, to recap though, this is what you really need. Uh, if you were to transfer this to another directory, uh, another project, um, you load this into your scene, uh, which is what's here. And then of course you can plug in the animations in the usual way. Now, when I looked at the sequencer, uh, we'll just load that up now and we can take a look at what that looks like. This is, um, as I said, the main sequence we saw online with uh, the two characters talking. If we just lock the camera and scrub the timeline, we can see her talking. Then he flips to the, the angle with the rig, back to her again, and then the male character comes in. Uh, it's really well laid out. It's nice and simple. You've got the audio at the top here. Uh, they've even added a fade. Then you've got the cameras uh, with all the respective keyframes. A lot they're doing a lot of keyframing around the focal distance, uh, particularly on her. I think we could see it at the uh, beginning there. And um, what I noticed as well is there's a head camera for the male and female, uh, but I couldn't really see where that was really appearing. Um, that much might be one that was left in there. Uh, under the lighting, what was interesting is it was broken down into different platforms. And again, if we refer back to the documentation, at the bottom of the main page, this is referred to as what Epic have provided you in this project. They talk about the platform support for the um, MetaHuman characters. And they can run on many platforms from high-end PC to really low down uh, Android and uh, um, mobile devices. And there's some really good information here about what's supported, what isn't, uh, including the lighting setup as well. And they mentioned some like, the, obviously, the PC one here was four ray traced shadow spotlights. We're on epic quality. Then you've got four shadowed spotlights for anything below that. Uh, and then the next level below that, which they're calling mobile and Gen 4, has got two shadowed spotlights. And that kind of threw me at first uh, until I realized, um, looking at the levels, if we bring up the levels, we can see that what Epic have provided is a different level per platform that you might be running the project on, which is really handy. And what I can do here is since you just load this up, um, they're all set to streaming as well. Um, so the usual process would be if I turn this off and go to the Gen 5 PC non-RT, which is I'm on a non-ray traced uh, platform hardware, turn that on. And that will have everything in it relevant to my particular hardware. And that means that the sequencer should work better as well. And that's why these things start to kind of come into play. 
um, what I did on some things, I just removed these and removed the other levels as well. And what I can do is go back to this and make sure um, it's always loaded instead of streaming, for example. And I can also change the lighting scenario over because the lighting is built separately for the hardware. Um, so it's really handy. So you've got a good range of platform support there. One thing to note, though, which is really worth looking at is the way uh, it's a small thing, but I think is really important when you're working with sequences and cinematics is how they have put the lights into the actual um, the tracks into the sequence of themselves. If we just take the first fold of the cinematic, you've got an actor here and then a key light. And we can see here in our outliner, this is what's actually um, how things are structured. They've got the key light here and then a Gen 5 key light. Um, actually, now what I should do, I should use the actual Gen 5. That's that's more relevant because that's what I'm loading on. Um, so we can see we've got a Gen 5 key actor and then uh, the key light. And what they've done is they've parented the key light to the actor. And that's a really good way of working because that what that means is with, with that parent-child relationship, we can now move the light to anywhere in your scene and level globally using the actor and then apply any local transformations, uh, angles, pitch, your, etc., to the light on a local um, context, which is far more flexible. It also means you can group the lights together. You could have multiple lights under one actor if you're building like a mini rig. Um, and this is a lot more flexible. And we can see here, if you open up the sequencer, the main actor is doing the main work on the location and some of the rotations as well. Nothing in the scale, obviously. But the key light is only doing lighting properties, in this case, intensity. Uh, there's nothing in the light color there at all. And this also makes it very easier to manage and control, which basically means that you're only using the actor for transforms and the, 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 the key light track in the sequencer for any of the lighting properties. So you always know what it is you're working on. And that's a really good way of working. There's one here that, that's slightly out, um, but this spotlight uh, on the hand, they've not added an actor to that. Maybe they didn't feel it necessary to do that, but it's a really good way of working. And that's what I often do when I've got multiple lights in my scene. I like to group them and pair them to actors because then if I'm moving them around the scene, um, I can use the actor to control that and I can spawn it into the level as well if I want to. And that's really all there is to this project. It's, it's very simple and quite light, really. There's not much uh, heavy data in there. Of course, it's f over four gigs in size, but that's down to the um, the data sets of the metahumans themselves, I think. But apart from that, it's very easy to manage. And as you can see, it runs on my hardware, no problem. If I was to play the sequence back, I do get a, quite a lot of drop frames and jerkiness, but actually all things considered, it's not bad. And I could always go into um, my engine scalability. I've got it set at Epic at the moment. I could always change that if I want to, um, to make it a little bit more uh, easier to play back. Now I mentioned the, the other sequences uh, because I'm only using the basic uh, meta-human sample uh, level here, but there's actually this MH turntable as well, and I haven't seen this actually being used much. But when we load this up, we can see this is an entirely different scene altogether, and this is just really part of the look there process for the characters. And in this context, we've got uh, both characters together, um, and also we've got a color calibrator in the scene as well, which is always good practice to use when you're doing look dev or doing lighting. and we can now go to our turntables directory here under the sample metahumans and this is where these sequences really come to play there's a turntable template you might have noticed there just quickly that i'm getting this texture streaming pool over budget here and um that i noticed that was quite common what i was looking at but what you can do to change that if you want to go to your developer tools output log and what you want is your command called r dot streaming streaming dot pool size and if we hit enter we can see it set to a thousand at the moment i think the default's 800 and i think it already upped it once what i could do here in the documentation is 
just set that to zero and that is supposed to be unlimited and that should really just play no problem so that's a really good tip if you start to encounter those those error messages which is quite common now i i loaded this turntable template if we just play that we can see what's going on here and both the characters are stood still and there's just the lights rotating uh, there's a camera mid here that's already locked in and we can see what this is doing so yeah that's fair enough it's a simple turntable of the lights there's also separate um, turntables for each character so there's one for the female and if we look at that that's a little bit different uh, it's the same mid camera but again we can see the differences with this one is that when we scrub the timeline the lights move but then also the character moves as well now this is a level sequence and then there's actually a master sequence this one here turntables and that contains that's got this turntable and that turntable loaded however I'm not going to open this now because on multiple times I've opened that and it hasn't actually worked and it's crashed and I don't know why that is I haven't quite looked at that yet but just just a, a, a cautionary uh, uh, thing there just to be, be mindful of that if it works for you it's probably fine it could be just a hardware issue for me now I haven't actually rendered these out so that's what I'm going to be doing next is just rendering these out at some settings and see and see what they look like and I'm, what I'm going to be doing that is getting ready for another video I'm doing around how to render out from the sequencer now you might be thinking that well I know how to render out from the sequencer I use this little um, clapperboard icon and render the render movie option and that works perfectly well and that's how most people have been rendering out their sequences however there's actually a better way and I think the way in which Epic would like us to start doing this probably going forwards once they've finished off the feature and that's using the movie render queue you can get to that from up here the Windows um, cinematics movie render queue if it's not there it's missing for you that's probably because you haven't got this plugin enabled um, and movie render queue there it is it's because it's beta and it hasn't been finished yet so that's why it's not loaded by default but this is I think the movie render queue is what epic will want people to start using by default and then gradually over time this feature will probably be removed or retired or maybe just not go anywhere I mean this is fine this is this is perfectly good and adequate you can uh, render EXRs JPEGs PNGs AVIs you can choose the uh, output format your size in uh, this enable texture streaming as well compression you can capture the gamut which is a rec 709 or even the ASIS which is really cool um, choose all your output directories it's got lots of options here uh, even do separate render passes however there's one fundamental thing to this which is a slight flaw you might say but um, it's going to be improved there are multiple sequences here so if I wanted to render out all four of these sequences I'd have to load each one in turn and then render it out manually with the movie render queue I don't need to do that I can actually tee them all up queue them all up uh, as the clues in the name and then it'll render everything out in, in sequence and that's a heck of a lot of, uh, of an improvement and also it's a huge time saver now if we just take a quick look at the movie render queue itself I'm not going to go too much into this because I'm going to, going to be explaining it in another video um, but it's really simple what it will do is you go to this button here like plus render it will look for every sequence in your project regardless of what subdirectory it's in and you can see here it's picked out the uh, the master sequence the meta human sample it's picked out the two sequences that I've worked on myself and also all our turntables and this to say this add uh, multiple ones I can choose the main master one and these two turntables as well I can even put the same one uh, in again if I wanted to there's nothing um, they might be thinking why would I do that that's because I can actually apply a different set of rendering presets to each sequence which is really cool now epic provides two configs for you which is really handy they have a master sample 4k and also 4k for the turntables this one here is something I've done I've just 
uh, created one myself and saved it. And that's another advantage where you can actually create your own set of configs and then load them up to match your particular um, things that you're looking to render. So if I just set these all up and you can see, I can quickly add whichever ones uh, I want. And I can then go into these. I get some options. I can alter these. Oh, and I'm going to go into this in a lot more depth. And I can then save it out as a preset and then load it up another time. So this is really handy. But essentially, if I've got everything happy there, I can just hit render local and it will render it all out for me. If you want to be really clever and if you've got the hardware, you can actually set up as a, in the, on a separate process on a separate machine. And then essentially what you've got is more or less a render farm. Um, but of course, not everybody's going to have that luxury and the, the amount of hardware required for it. But if you've got a good enough machine, you can queue up your sequences, hit render local, and it will just go through them uh, nice and easy in the right order. So it's a good thing to do maybe overnight or other times when you're busy, and then you can leave it rendering. Okay, so that's really it for this video. Um, I hope I haven't gone too long. I'm just really just going through what I discovered in the project. What I'm going to do next is talk about what I did for my renders, just to kind of show you what I did and how I tweaked it. I didn't really go too deep into tweaking the lighting, but what I'm working on now is something a little bit um, more different. I'm trying to reproduce a certain look or style of portrait uh, photography, which I really like. And I'll be in my next video, I'll be talking about that and how I've done that and also how I'm going to render that out and also the, uh, the settings that I use to render out my sequences. If you want to get more information about MetaHumans, then I would go to the landing page on the unrealengine.com website. I think going forwards, this is likely to be the best place to get information. Um, they've also provided a link for people to register for updates. There's been several epic people online talking through social media channels about this project and some people have been really hitting them with loads of questions and they've tried their best to answer them but I don't think they're in a position right now to really give everybody all the answers they're, they're, um, they want and I think many of them have just directed people to this page and also to register for updates because that's going to be the best source information and um, so yeah I think that's what I would actually do that's what I've already done in fact. But I'm really excited a bit about this technology. I think this is going to be incredible to see once it eventually starts to be released. And it's been very interesting to read the discussions online about what the impact of this technology might be in terms of asset creation and artist jobs and so on. I don't think this is a solution that's meant to replace an artist, personally, in my humble opinion. Uh, there have been character generators uh, provided by people before some have been good some not so good but what this does do is it lowers the barrier of entry for anybody wanting to create this type of pho photorealistic character in, and uh, content and that otherwise would not have been possible without a lot of resources and a lot of technology um, having access to something like this now not only allows you to create a character to a very high visual fidelity but also you get a fully rigged uh, character with hair and clothing as well and that's also all the other things that need to be taken in consideration when you start creating these photorealistic characters so being able to access this I think it's going to be a huge driver for people going forwards um, and there'll still be a place for the realist all the kind of stylistic content which is a bit more niche um, that type of thing really requires a greater level of creative input and that will still be driven I think by by the artist but it's going to be interesting to see these two worlds collide going forwards Anyway, what I'll do is I'll I'll include some misinformation in my in the uh, description below. I'll also include some links to some videos I've seen some people who are doing the live link stuff and also some of the epic content as well. Feel free to like and comment below. I'm really keen to hear what you guys think.